Welcome to Small Talk, where each week we sit down to discuss the sermon-based small group questions at Wallula Christian Church. Hello and welcome back to Small Talk, Wallula's weekly podcast. My name is Zach Bolin. I am joined by Craig Archer and Lance Kaufman. We are glad that you're with us today. Um, we are continuing on in our sermon series, Hurdles, as we look at Acts chapter 6, uh, specifically serving, serving in the church. Um, and before we get started, we're going to jump into uh, a fun question. This is one that I came up with, and by coming up with, I mean I googled questions, and this one stood out to me. I thought this was kind of fun. It said, what are the books or movies or games uh, that never get old and always make you feel better when you get down? So what's just like one you could play all the time that has you have sort of a soft spot for um, in any of those things? I guess I could have said songs, but mm-hmm. no. You could have. I didn't. Yeah. No songs. Anyway, doesn't matter. Well, I was going to break the rules and use <laughs> music, so <laughs> that's <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, because, go well, for it. And when I looked at the list, like, because it's specifically for when you feel down. And so if I'm feeling down, a book is too long. Yeah, I thought that too. Like when I started and, thinking about it, I was like, yeah. a book? Who's just like, and I don't this really... is the book I read every time I feel. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, the Bible? I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. helped when I feel down. but Yeah. And like, I don't watch a ton of movies. Uh-huh. I mean, you could substitute like TV shows yeah, yeah, in yeah. there maybe. Yeah. And then games, like, I don't know the last time I played a game. So yeah. other than, like, games with my kids, right. which is, like, a bluey game. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to pick that. Yeah, right. Um, but any, So I'm going to go with – I'm going to pick music. Okay. Um, there's uh, my favorite drummer of all time. His name is Brian Blade. He's a jazz drummer, and he's done some other stuff with, like, pop artists. But uh, he has his own jazz uh, band. It's a five-piece band that I got really into in college. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's an album of theirs. It was released probably back in like 2009 or 10 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I go back to it all the time. Mm. It kind of, you know, it's like nostalgic. Uh, I still just love the music in it. And like, if I'm after like a long day, if I'm like trying to clean up the kitchen or something or whatever, I just throw that on, and it's like very calming to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm feeling down or whatever like sure. yeah it's something like i always go back to that so okay that's Lance, who's your favorite jazz drummer yeah i i uh i like steve blade okay <laughs> who is, is brian's that, is brian's brother okay i thought yeah. lesser cousin. known yes yeah it's kind of it's hard for him yeah he's uh, yeah. living in the shadow <laughs> never lived up never lived up to big brother <laughs> but but I like his work. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He only has a four piece band. Okay. He didn't he didn't get the fifth piece? Yeah. So. He's always yeah. He's yeah. always just jealous mm-hmm. and yeah. riding the coattails of Fair yeah. Brian. Yep. Fair enough. Well, you yep. put a lot of thought into that. Uh, Is that your answer? <laughs> Doug. Yeah. <laughs> That's, <laughs> <he played? laughs> That's good enough. <laughs> He's like, what does it matter? <laughs> That's what you listen to. Steve you don't strike Blade. me, even if you have a like, uh, even if you had music listed on this. Uh, to me, you don't strike me as someone who listens to music. Like to to like when I'm feeling down, I'm going to put on some music. Am I? Maybe I'm wrong. No, I probably yeah. yeah. No, I pr- that no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Uh, not really. Not mm-hmm. not like if I'm feeling something, then I will. I have music for certain things. Like if mm-hmm. I'm getting work done. I like pop my earbuds, and, mm-hmm. and so and then if I'm doing like if I'm doing dishes or cooking in the house, I have like a little playlist that I like to put on. It's just got more lighthearted, but mm-hmm. not like this is my sad mix, my melancholy, mm-hmm. right? You know, mix. Uh, so no, nothing. And I guess in the whole like when it gets you down, my thought was like, what makes you feel better? Sure. So maybe you're not sad when you're listening to it, but right. like, what's something yeah. you're like? Oh, you perk up. Oh, this is mm-hmm. on. Right. Oh yeah, you want to play that? And so the idea yeah. of like. So maybe thinking from the other side, but um, I put, you know, the, the stuff that I, my mind went to was just stuff from high school. So I remember, and this is dumb, literally, but like Dumb and Dumber was the movie that, <laughs> yeah. and I haven't seen it in forever. That and Wayne's World were the two that it's just like, I used to quote it, right. you know, those, those movies. Yeah. And it's not like they're my favorites. They're not the most it's not the funniest thing I've ever seen, but just mm-hmm. something about it because mm-hmm. when I was middle school, high school, it's just mindless. Yeah, it totally is. And right. like, no matter where it is, I, 
I, I perk up and I was like, yeah. Oh, what's, what scene is that? And then mm-hmm. could, you know, and so I don't know why that, those two stood out to me. Um, and then the, the, the game I thought of, because I don't play a lot of games, but I like to, um, but it's mm-hmm. spades and it's a game I almost never get to play, but it, you, you have to have mm-hmm. four people and a lot of time. Right. And so, mm-hmm. uh, it's fun when I get to play spades with people mm-hmm. who like to play because it's not just like, Hey, let's play a quick game. I win and it's mm-hmm. over. But it's just sort of like, okay, we're building points. Yeah. It's growing. So um, I get a kick out of it when it happens. But it almost never does. Mm. And ironically, I do yeah. a lot of games with the youth group. Yeah. And we never get to play spades. Because right. you can only have four. <laughs> we have to know how to play. You have to know how to play. You yeah. can only have four. Yeah. And you have to have time. And I, right. those things almost right. never happen. Mm-hmm. So. Right. We played a lot of spades in college. Uh-huh. Um, that was kind of a big deal uh, when we, during our era at mm-hmm. school. Lot, everybody played spades in the campus center, and we the pre podcast conversation we were talking about finals week or whatever. Uh-huh. And during like finals week, they would have spade tournaments in the in the <laughs> Great for campus studying. center. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> up all night yep. kind of things. Yeah, we played yeah. a lot of spades. Yeah, in college. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, did you have anything specific? Uh, well, I, I thought of movies and I just kind of, when I read this question, I just thought of movies like, Oh, when, when you're turning through channels and you see the movie or whatever, you stop on it Mm -hmm. and you'd watch it for a while. And like, uh, the Hoosiers, Mm -hmm. you know, if Hoosiers comes on, I'm going to stop and watch for a little while. Um, then some, uh, the fugitive, Oh, you yeah. guys remember Harrison that Ford. old TV show, but Harrison oh, Ford. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. the Harrison Ford. No, that's Is that what, what you're talking about. about. Okay, yeah. yeah. Like if that comes on, I'm going to stop and watch. I know he's you know going to get arrested and let go and all those Have things. You but this? you uh-uh. you stay and band? watch it. Oh, no. oh, you've never Doctor seen that. Who's framed? Yeah, never saw it. Yeah, Tommy Boy. Yes, another one. that was Tommy okay. Boy. Yeah. So that was the, that was the other one. Uh-huh. My, yeah. Yeah. So I think of those things and like games. I don't know. I'm. I mean, I kind of enjoy playing board games or whatever that sort of thing but uh you know baseball like i'm gonna enjoy mm-hmm. the baseball no matter kind of what it is and yeah. sort of stop and watch i thought you were gonna minutes. say that like if the royals are on speaking yeah. of games we'll combine tv and yeah <laughs> and sports. yeah, yeah and well, so put that on sometimes we see that in your office <laughs> yeah and, and really kind of this idea of reminiscing or think you know soothing like a baseball game on the radio mm-hmm. if you're sitting around old guys mm-hmm. who enjoy baseball they'll talk about baseball on the radio and there really is something to it's it's a different kind of mm-hmm. uh game and that you can you can get into it on the radio yeah mm-hmm. you know there's yeah i remember it's funny because when you go on like youth trips like now, like Zoe went with us on a on a youth trip this past uh, a high school trip this past um, mm-hmm. uh, February as a sponsor, and so she right. was in charge of the songs. Right. I mean, Texas to hear eight hours. She had it like, oh, I, like this is it's going to start off fun, and then when they start sleeping, I have other a second, you know, just all this. Sure. Stuff. But I remember Mark Palmer when I was helping out. He one time just listened to the Royals and like the kids yeah. are like, can we listen to music? And he's like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, they're on. And we were coming back from, I think from Manhattan. So it wasn't a super yeah. long trip, but right. he was like, no. And I was like, now I'm youth pastor. I was like, I don't know if I can do that. He'd be like, sorry, kids, we're just going to listen to the one thing I want. <laughs> and uh, you don't think so? I don't know. I don't think I would, I would do that. But, um, don't I'd, they all have earbuds now? You yeah, could probably get away with yeah. it. Everybody kids, plug in. Kids these We're days, just gonna, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. that's like in in the in our van right now with our three kids. Uh-huh. Elsie and Ava have things they always want to listen to, mm-hmm. and now with music streaming, like right. everything's available at right. all times. And every once in a while, yeah, like. Don't. Ava Brothers came out with a new album recently, so we're like, we're gonna listen to this, mm-hmm. and they were just like, what? <laughs> no, because like, they're just so used to yeah, yeah. the Blue music Station is always broken. available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah that's yeah. the world we live in now. Yeah. Streaming, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, all right. There you go. Uh, we are continuing on with uh, the, going through the Book of Acts, and we're in Acts chapter six. Uh, we're looking at one of the the first possibilities of division where we see these this favoritism being shown or, or possible favoritism mm-hmm. uh, between these Hellenistic Jews and the Hebraic Jews uh, the widows I'm sorry help the the, the widows of the they Hellenistic, were also Jewish and they were also Jewish yes Hellenistic Jewish widows Hebraic Jewish widows mm-hmm. uh, but yeah one group is being overlooked and so they uh, 
the it was brought up to the apostles' uh, attention, and uh, and then they worked together and figured out a plan, promoted some more leaders within the church to look over those widows, and so we're looking at this idea of serving uh, when there's people groups uh, within the church who have a need. Uh, what do we do and how do we serve that? And so uh, a lot of questions we could have chosen. The first one we're going to look at is number three. And it said in Acts chapter six, the church uh, had overlooked a group of widows in need. Uh, mm -hmm. And yet uh, in that whole discussion, we don't ever see finger pointing. So the question is, what qualities must Christians have to resolve differences between believers? Mm -hmm. So they handled it really well. Um, they did not let pride or egos get in the way. They had a, you know, sort of the similar focus. So um, as we in the modern church are also dealing with people who are different backgrounds and different mm -hmm. thoughts and stuff, um, what do you need when it comes to either leadership or just working together with different people? Um, yeah, what characteristics, what qualities do you think serve people well? One of the things that you said on Sunday that I wrote down, good quote, was it's hard to feel divided when you're on the same team. Mm. And we talk about that a lot. Um, we'll say, you know, being part of God's family or mm -hmm. God's team being united uh and, the, and it's not like a, a group project kind of team mm -hmm. where one or two people are doing all the work and everyone's kind of like just scraping by but it like when you're on a team and you have a common goal mm -hmm. you're all of the same mind like we've talked about this <laughs> a lot already through acts we see that especially in those first few chapters yeah. um and i and that's the first thing that came to mind was uh, when you're on the same team, united, you have that common goal. Uh, that's one of the big things that shapes what you have to have. And, um, and I, just like some of the traits that I thought of, which you kind of just hinted at was like being humble, mm -hmm. having humility. Uh, I thought of Romans, uh, 12, 10 outdo one another in showing honor, mm -hmm. like having another person's interest in mind before your own, mm -hmm. That's what we see in this passage, um, and and so far in Acts, like when <laughs> we you know we're witnessing them kind of figuring it out as they go a little bit, but they're thinking of each other, mm -hmm. thinking of the body first, right? Because Jesus gave them this mission, mm -hmm. and so they're set on that. And they're like, are they doing it perfectly? Not necessarily, mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, like having someone else in mind. That's one of the biggest things, I think, mm -hmm. because if you're selfish thinking of mm -hmm. what's going to benefit you the most, that's where it begins to break down and then pointing fingers happens. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that was the first thought I had, just thinking of others, mm -hmm. humility, humbleness, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I had, you know, I think a lot of the things will overlap. My, my thought was this, and maybe because it came from the scripture itself, but the first thing I thought of was just wisdom. Um, I know a lot of people who have love and who have a desire to um, get along with everyone, um, but without wisdom to know like, okay, uh, like love can make, maybe say like, hey guys, let's not, let's not fight, let's not argue, let's all get along. Mm -hmm. But wisdom will say like, no, this is actually something we should stand up on, or this is something that we don't need to, you know, uh, press on. And so um, whatever the issue may be, I, I, I don't even have a specific idea in mind, but wisdom helps to guide uh, discussions and, and to give discernment uh, when, when there is disagreement. So that was one of the first things I thought of, like a quality to resolve differences, because sometimes the differences are uh, small and it's like, hey, we're both wanting just different things. And sometimes there may be a right answer. Right. Maybe the difference mm -hmm. is like, no, yeah. no, this is the right way to go. And so having the wisdom and discernment uh, to help focus on the big picture, like you said, with um, what is the mission? Like, what's the big picture here? Um, do I need to step back from this because it's not about me? Or do I need to step up because this is lacking? Yeah. Um, so, you know, having, the, you know, we say the mission, the big picture, you know, you could say focus on Jesus, evangelism, honoring God, whatever, all those kind of things. Um, I thought, yeah. And then the other things were just, you know, when I think of leaders or people who can handle um disagreements well or lead that I think of uh you know some of the characteristics would be for sure patience uh humility like you said uh mm -hmm. empathy mm -hmm. just understanding like even if someone even if I disagree with someone I'm like okay but I understand where you're coming from right and, and the frustration that you may have still have uh, but 
as I was thinking about all of this, I was reminded of in Matthew 5, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, that, you know, all of us are called to this. This isn't just the leaders. Right. Uh, in Matthew 5, you know, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Mm-hmm. Like, all of us are supposed to be peacemakers. Right. And so if there is division in the church, if there is, you know, uh, differences between believers, uh, we all have a responsibility to that. And mm-hmm. what got me thinking of it was, from top to bottom, there's going to be issues when people come together, maybe because of our own selfishness or just backgrounds. And, uh, and that's okay. Uh, it's just how we handle that. But not every problem needs to go straight up to like the elders and the pastors. Right. A lot of them can be solved and talked about and discussed and worked through even right. on a, you know, if it's just, you're the only one who knows, Oh, these two people are whatever. Uh, you can help facilitate that and handle that. You could mm-hmm. be the peacemaker in that situation. Um, and so that's the the bigger call is like, hey, we're all supposed to be peacemakers, which means we all need to strive for wisdom and discernment. And sometimes right. discernment is, I need to, I need help with this, and sometimes mm-hmm. it's, yeah. I need to step up. But, um, but anyway, yeah, that's that's some of my thoughts on that question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I liked uh, on Sunday you were talking about, uh, you know, how, okay, so how did they get here, mm-hmm. right? How did this problem arise in the first place? And you you. You said, well, maybe it was a language barrier, mm-hmm. right? Or maybe it was just a, a lack of communication. Nobody spoke up for themselves. They didn't, you know, and, and uh, but eventually, you know, they did, right? Mm-hmm. They, okay, this is the problem. Mm-hmm. And they brought it to the apostles and said, okay, well, this is the struggle we're having. And so to, to me, I, I just think about the fact that we need to, uh, I don't know if it's characteristic, but we need to communicate well. Mm. You know, we need to uh, uh, follow Matthew 18 and just, uh, you know, if there's if there's an issue that somebody has an issue with somebody else, then go to them privately, right? right? Seek them out. And uh, and if you have a problem with me, come seek me out. Mm-hmm. You know, like, come to me privately. And and then uh, if somebody comes to you with a problem they have with me or mm-hmm. or whatever, then uh, say, hey, you ought to go talk to Lance. Right. You know, send them to me. Right. And uh, follow those steps. And and if they keep coming to you, you know, this happens, right? I mean, just mm-hmm. and and it's not even uh, you know, it's just people who are are struggling. They're hurt, and they just want some validation they just want some support and and so uh, you know gossip can get real ugly but it, it's also a pretty natural thing for mm-hmm. people to kind of seek that support and validation they want to be heard. yeah mm-hmm. yeah all that stuff and so but if somebody keeps coming to you with an issue with somebody else mm-hmm. then you know say something like hey why don't we go together mm-hmm. to talk to Lance or Craig or whoever, mm-hmm. right? Or probably uh, Craig. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, and and I, I bet I bet he would listen to us. Uh-huh. You know, I bet we could have a conversation with he or she. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so go do that. And and, um, and so I think it's important that we communicate well and we just uh, we just listen. You know, in churches sometimes divisions occur and people get upset and. Uh, you know, they'll uh, send a note or an email or, you know, fill out a uh, one of those welcome home cards, you know, and they'll be unsigned. Anonymous, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anonymous, right? And, of course, on staff and leadership, we say uh, we, we won't consider those unsigned cards. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the dirty little secret, all right? That's really not true. You know, if, if you if you fail to communicate well and you just kind of bypass Matthew 18 and you say, I want to kind of get this in, but I don't want to, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't want to communicate. I don't mm-hmm. want to have this confrontation. I don't, you know, I'm just going to send it in. Then, um, you know, the person who reads that, the person in leadership who, you have to read it, otherwise you don't know it's unsigned, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? I mean, that's the kind of this goofiness of you'll hear leaders say, well, we won't even consider this unsigned note. Mm-hmm. Everybody reads those. And when it's unsigned, there's nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no one to talk to about it. Mm-hmm. There's no one to address that hurt with. Mm-hmm. There's no way to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there might be a real issue there, but 
but there's no there's nothing you can do Mm -hmm. and the only thing you've accomplished is you've you've hurt that person's feelings Mm -hmm. you know that that person who says oh i'm not going to consider this at all Mm -hmm. well the dirty little secret is everybody reads that and maybe you know depending on your personality you're able to put that aside in a hour (laughs) <laughs> you know, or a mm-hmm. day, you can leave it uh, alone, but everybody is going to read that and go, oh, you know, somebody's mad at me. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody doesn't like me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I hurt somebody and there's nothing you can do about right. it. Yeah. You know, there's no way to solve there's it. There's no possibility for reconciliation or restoration right. or mm-hmm. right. explanation and, or anything. Right. Yeah. And so, you, you know, the, the folks here in, in Acts chapter six, they, you know, they, communicated mm-hmm. what, what was going on and why they were hurt mm-hmm. and and, uh, and maybe that unsigned note just like in act six you know it's a legitimate concern mm-hmm. uh, but there's no way to address it mm-hmm. so you know go to that person privately uh, bring you know support if necessary if that doesn't work mm-hmm. and and uh, you know seek the the if it's in the church leaders in the church to address that right in the end so yeah yeah well and that that kind of i mean not kind of that really leads into our second question which is number seven um which is specifically like how do we react when we begin to see these fault lines within our church and so whether it's big or small when you start to notice people either maybe one person being feeling separated or distanced or not looked after Mm -hmm. or or a big problem you know uh what do you uh how do you land on the right side of you know, promote being a peacemaker and addressing the issue and, and all of that. So mm-hmm. what did, what did you have, Craig? Well, I guess the first step that I wrote down, which, um, kind of sounds silly is don't ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But that's, I mean, kind of has to be said. Um, cause like, like you just mentioned something big or small, sometimes we can look at something and think it's small Mm -hmm. and then just kind of turn away and just be like someone else will take care of it right i guess you know and uh that might not always be the case Mm -hmm. and you know you might be there for the reason of noticing and and doing something about it and and also too just uh if that if something is placed in front of you or uh you know it could be a prompting from the holy spirit Mm -hmm. to for you to have your eyes open and be attentive to something. And so not ignoring it is one of those first steps. And then doing something with it, you know, that's either taking something into your own hands and bringing it to someone Mm -hmm. that can fix or help or Mm -hmm. the right right people with the right skills and tools, having the right conversations in the right manner. Um, But then one thing that's kind of, overarching through all of it and we see in the passage to Acts 6 um, verse 4 they said we're going to continue to to devote ourselves to prayer and to ministry of the word Mm -hmm. and so through the whatever process you're going through whether it's a big thing a small thing or whatever um, continuing to pray through Mm -hmm. it and not just relying on yourself but seeking wisdom Mm -hmm. seeking guidance um, and and that's the big thing is not just putting it all on ourselves to mm-hmm. fix the problems in the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Like we are the body, and so we do things together. We're on the same team. Right. But ultimately, we need to always be in prayer and going to God for guidance and wisdom mm-hmm. through all of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was thinking about uh, – I was trying to think, okay, what if there's a specific issue, right? And I, I didn't even think of any – I couldn't think of one. Like, oh, this is – I'll use this as the example. But just if there was something that I was on my heart um, – like the first thing is like acknowledging, you know, it, it own up to if I have a part in this conflict, like is, is yeah. am I part of the problem or does it concern me? And if, if I've contributed to this at right. all, then, you know, start off with that. Like, okay, I need to whatever. Mm-hmm. But then the second one, and this kind of goes along with, with what Lance said is like, be direct. Um, and you know, we, it's, it's easy to talk about someone rather ta- than talking to someone. And so I'll, I'll sign the card and talk about the issue, but, right. but not going to them. And so, you know, Jesus says in Matthew 25 that we're supposed to settle matters quickly. Uh, if you have with your adversary, if, if someone has something against you, uh, you need to go be reconciled to them at that moment. And mm-hmm. so there's a precedence for 
um, a precedent for taking care of that if you know about it. And mm-hmm. I like what you said. Sometimes you may be one of the only ones who notices, who picks up on it. Everyone right. else is seeing it, but mm-hmm. you're able to be like, I notice that this is starting. There, there's some sort of mm-hmm. thing going on. And so be direct. Go up to them. Um, and practically, I think uh, uh, I just thought, like, believe the best in people. And so mm-hmm. if you're hurt, right. it is easy to – already assume the worst and then it's kind of like in the scripture like why are you ignoring the widows and it's like whoa right uh, not exactly assuming the best here that the apostles were doing this on purpose mm-hmm. and it's like it, they're not showing favoritism they mm-hmm. it could have been just an, a mistake but um i think a lot of times we go in like ready ready for a fight um and it's like first let's hear them out and, and believe the best i know from just experience sometimes a parent and i appreciate this will say hey can i talk to you I'm like okay and so they're being direct. They're saying, here's something that I heard that my students said. And I love that they ask me because I can give context to, mm-hmm. sure. you know, and I realize that's not what we said. That was a, you know, a student brought something up and then the conversation went this way and brought it back and whatever the case is. Right. And most of the time the parents like, oh, OK, I appreciate that. Thanks. You know, uh, yeah. but uh, being able to uh, come to them directly believing the best in, in the motives or the intention of what someone has to say. And then, um, you know, I think the other big thing is just kind of like being on the same team, just that you, you want what's best, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so if I have problems with the worship or it's too loud or dark or whatever, you know, (laughs) petty thing I may think of, uh, even if I'm going to talk to you, I want to be like, Hey, listen, I, we want the same thing. Like we want, a really good service and I'm concerned maybe it's too loud for me. It's not too loud for me. I'm just making up something. Right. Um, but I think, uh, w- recognizing we're on the same team, we want the same thing. How can we do this best? And, and, um, and also offering people hope like, Hey, when mm-hmm. you said this, it hurt my feelings, but I'm sure you didn't mean to. Right. And so, you know, and so, and then the last one, like you said, I, I thought just still covering all of this in prayer. Mm-hmm you know, uh, coming to God and and recognizing, Hey, I want to honor you in this. Even if I'm confronting someone, how can I do this? Well, yeah. Uh, and I think that, yeah, there's not like one right way, but Mm -hmm. I think those are some of the things. And one of the things you said that I, I didn't think about this, but I really liked is like your example, like a parent talking to you, Mm -hmm. uh, in the, on the other side of it, you're better for it. Yeah having that conversation mm-hmm. absolutely even if it's uncomfortable or difficult mm-hmm. right. oftentimes on the other end of it it's better and i think about uh, as you're talking i thought about in uh galatians when paul is talking about his confrontation with peter mm-hmm. where he confronts him about how he's acting in front of the jews mm-hmm. and gentile crowds right. and like i don't think paul was like let's go do this mm-hmm. and was like all cheery about it yeah. you know going into that conversation he's probably like oh man i gotta do this mm-hmm. and he confronts him and I'm, I'm sure they were better off for it yeah. and stronger. And like mm-hmm. they had that united same goal and he, and he brought it back to the gospel. Mm-hmm. He's like, if we're supposed to live this out, like we can't be doing this. Right. And, and so, you know, I, they continued to minister and, and do those things together. So yeah, it's yeah, better I, on the other end. I would say when I was young and immature and, uh, yeah, I I would be like, I don't want parents calling me out on stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to mm-hmm. be confronted when I was insecure and blah, blah, blah. And now, as I've gotten older, I appreciate not only if a parent calls me out, you know, in, a, in like wants to meet one-on-one, but just in anything, when I when I hear someone being like, I'm concerned about this, so I went and talked to them. I That stands out to me so much more and means right. more to me that it's like, man, thank you for – modeling that and mm-hmm. and because it's so easy to just let it go and not say anything and just harbor yeah you know and so i even if it's against me i would rather them do that and so right. in any case i think it's it's such a healthy thing to do mm-hmm. but it's hard mm-hmm. yeah um, but yeah yeah well y- yeah i i don't have uh so much to add to this conversation i don't think i just wrote down own learn keep leading Mm-hmm. Right. And so you guys have said it, you have to own it, whether that means, you know, you have a part to play in it, mm-hmm. the, you know, in the issue and you have to examine your own heart mm-hmm. and um, 
come to terms with maybe your own sin or whatever or owning it by like like Craig was saying don't let it pass don't just mm. ignore it because the conversation is too hard um, so you, so you have to own that and, and you have to learn for the you know you were talking about you know parent coming to talk to you and being able to provide context and mm-hmm. okay this is the entire conversation mm-hmm. you know this is everything that happened on that trip mm-hmm. and uh and so this is where we were at and how the decision was made and all of those sorts of things and and so you can learn and, and you have to be willing to hear and um truly in our world we are not good at this mm-hmm. You know, we are less and less good at this Mm -hmm. Um, because, and and part of the problem is, is that we live in a world where um, we we think there, you know, somebody has to win and somebody has to lose uh, every conversation, Mm -hmm. every situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, There, there has to be a, uh, uh, I don't want to say right and wrong. Those are the poor choice of words, but there has to be a winner. Mm -hmm. There has to be somebody who's... uh, this is this is the good choice this is the bad choice. You know, a few chapters later in the book of Acts, we're going to get to Paul and Barnabas, who are, are ready to go back out on another missions trip, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and Barnabas said, "I want to bring John Mark again." John Mark mm-hmm. had left earlier, mm-hmm. and and Paul said, "Not a good idea." Mm-hmm. And uh, you get to Acts chapter fifteen, verse thirty-nine. Uh, and it says, it's not a especially fun verse. It simply says, and there arose a sharp disagreement so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. And so they, there arose this sharp disagreement. Mm-hmm. Now, you can, you can look. You can go through Acts uh, all the way till the end, you can look in the rest of the New Testament, and and the deal is, you're never going to find out like who was in the right mm-hmm. and who was in the wrong. Right, you know, God n- never reveals that. Mm-hmm. And uh, look, there's all kinds of conclusions you could draw, mm-hmm. but at least one of the conclusions, and maybe maybe the best one, but at least one of the conclusions is, you know. There wasn't a right and a wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, maybe it was just that God knew that uh, John Mark wasn't ready to go with Paul in his direction, mm-hmm. or or maybe he just knew that Silas was the better choice, mm-hmm. better fit for that particular ministry, mm-hmm. and Mark would be better served to be with Barnabas. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, both Barnabas and Paul were right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, maybe they had this disagreement, and they had to figure it out. And eventually, what you do learn is that uh, the fences are mended, more or less, right? Mm -hmm. Later on, Paul, Paul will say in one of his letters, you know, John Mark, he's a pretty good guy, right? He's a valued colleague in ministry. Mm -hmm. And so those fences get mended somehow, at, at the very least. But we don't know who's right. And I think that's so important that we... Uh, remember that, that sometimes, you know, this disagreement and there's, there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. Mm -hmm. There's nobody in the wrong Mm -hmm. necessarily. You know, nobody's the evil party Mm -hmm. villain in the, in the whole thing. And, and we have to hang in there with each other and, uh, and keep leading, keep serving, keep, keep going Mm -hmm. together. And, uh, you know that we we describe the church all the time as a family and one of the thing about one of the things about every family is that there will be disagreements in that family and those disagreements when they are healed you know they they truly those tend to be things that bond that family together right. you're stronger you know, for you're, it yeah, yeah yeah and so um you know, we, that's true in the church too. Mm-hmm. That's true in the church too. Yeah. If, if we stick it out, mm-hmm. if we keep going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. But for real, that worship music, a little too loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Decided to bring it up right, right now. Right now. We're, yeah. we're, we're practicing it in real time. 
<laughs> no. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. And, and if you're going through this in your small groups and you something comes up, yeah, I mean, be sure to practice this. You know, it's easy for us to point out things, I think, what's wrong with right. our families or other people. And yeah. and so now it's like, okay, that's that's the first step. And so yeah. if you if you can acknowledge that but not do anything about it, that's right. then the problem lies yeah. with you and not bringing it up. And So know. any issues, it's – Zach at Wallula. <laughs> like, That'll work. Small talk at what is it? <laughs> bring him, bring him here. He's like, yeah, my complaints against this podcast. Sure. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks. <laughs>